German engineers presented a groundbreaking aircraft that defied conventional design in the last years of World War II, the Dornier DO-335 file, sometimes known as the Arrow. With propellers at both the nose and the tail and a distinctive push-pull arrangement, this inventive fighter sought to reach hitherto unheard of speed and performance. Come explore the amazing narrative of the DO-335, the insane German fighter with a propeller at both ends. The Dornier DO-335's narrative starts in the 1930s as aviation pioneers started testing unusual aircraft layouts to get beyond the constraints of modern designs. German engineer Claudius Dornier was leading the assault. His company was known for stretching the envelope of aeronautics. Dornier imagined a high-performance aircraft with twin engines combining the aerodynamic efficiency of a single-engine airframe with their power capability. The DO-335 would have its basis in this idea. Dornier had long supported the push-pull engine design, which drove a pusher propeller by arranging one engine at the nose of the aircraft and another at the rear. Unlike wing-mounted engines, this arrangement reduced drag and removed the asymmetric thrust problems afflicting conventional twin-engine aircraft. The end effect was a simplified design with more stability and speed capability. In principle, the push-pull arrangement presented the best of both worlds. The clean aerodynamics of a single-engine fighter mixed with the raw force of twin engines. Although interesting, this idea was unexplored ground and would demand engineers to overcome several technical difficulties. From matching the propellers to cool the back engine, the design necessitated creative ideas to make it feasible. The ultimate design of the DO-335 resulted from both need and imagination. Though the dual engines offered it unheard of power, its simplified fuselage and fanned wings were tuned for high-speed performance. While the back engine generated more thrust, the front engine drove a tractor propeller, pushing the airplane forward. The DO-335 is among the most advanced piston engine aircraft ever designed thanks to this creative configuration. Dornier offered the DO-335 as a solution in 1942 as the Luftwaffe looked for quicker and more flexible fighters to offset Allied gains. The Luftwaffe saw promise as a multi-role platform capable of interceptor, ground attack, and reconnaissance missions. Its speed, range, and weaponry promised to exceed those of current aircraft. Before the DO-335 could soar, it was extensively tested to guarantee mechanical dependability and aerodynamic effectiveness. Its simplified profile was confirmed by wind tunnel experiments. Prototype models enabled engineers to perfect the intricate push-pull engine design. These tests were vital in overcoming the particular difficulties presented by the dual engine arrangement. Designed with comfort and situational awareness of the pilot in mind, the cockpit of the DO-335 was a wonder of its own. With great visibility and sophisticated instruments, the cockpit lets pilots maximize the aircraft's capabilities. It was abundantly evident that the file, sometimes nicknamed Aero, was more than just an experiment. It was a daring stride into the future of aviation. Development and Prototyping Development of the DO-335 rushed quickly in 1942. The prototype flew on October 26, 1943. Exceeding modern piston engine fighters, its speed, maneuverability, and climb rate demonstrated a remarkable impression on test pilots. The fastest piston-engineered fighter of its day, the aircraft was approaching 474 miles per hour. Its exceptional performance gave enormous expectations for its Luftwaffe contribution. Pilots said the DO-335 handled remarkably well with sensitive controls and amazing acceleration. The aircraft's creative design was shown in its capacity to keep stability even with one engine off. These encouraging findings spurred ideas for mass manufacturing and application in other combat situations. Armament and Capabilities 
comprising two 20mm MG-15120 cannons positioned in the wings and a 30mm MK-103 cannon firing from the propeller hub, the DO-335 was strongly equipped. This strong arsenal allowed it to properly target ground as well as air. The aircraft's adaptability as a fighter bomber was further improved by carrying bombs or auxiliary fuel tanks on underwing hardpoints. The DO-335 could intercept enemy bombers and, with equal accuracy, carry out ground attack missions with its strong armaments and great speed. Its design allows for quick engagements and fast withdrawals, a major tactical advantage in many combat situations, by allowing fast climbs to altitude, production challenges, and delays. The DO-335 had a great design, but manufacturing challenges were great. Targeting German industrial infrastructure, Allied bombing raids resulted in material shortages and disturbance of manufacturing processes. Further limiting manufacturing was the aircraft's intricate design, which called for specific parts and trained workers. Consequently, the war's operational significance was limited by only 37 units being finished by its end. Despite ongoing Allied airstrikes and limited resources, workers felt great pressure to reach output targets. The complex assembly process of the DO-335 necessitated accuracy and knowledge. Hence, manufacturing the aircraft at the necessary scale and speed became difficult. The Dornier DO-335 file had unmatched speed and firepower therefore reflecting a breakthrough in aviation technology. However, the convergence of resource constraints, manufacturing delays, and the fast worsening war scenario kept it from reaching its full promise. We will investigate the operational background of the DO-335 and its ongoing legacy in aviation history as we proceed. Operational Deployment in early 1945, in the latter months of World War II, the Dornier DO-335 made its operational debut. By now, the Luftwaffe was disorganized, struggling with fuel shortages, experienced pilots, and operational airfields. Notwithstanding these difficulties, a small number of DO-335s were delivered to Luftwaffe stations meant to be high-speed interceptors able to neutralize Allied bombing operations. Deployed mostly as an interceptor, the DO-335's speed and firepower allowed it to quickly climb to meet Allied bomber formations, therefore upsetting their operations. The file was theoretically capable of outperforming and outmaneuvering any Allied fighter of the age, with a top speed of 474 miles per hour and a climb rate of around 4,900 feet per minute. It was a platform for hit-and-run attacks, since the file's push-pull arrangement kept stability even at high speeds. Equipped with two 20mm cannons and a 30mm cannon, it could give Allied bombers lethal firepower, while depending on speed to avoid counterattacks. But the terrible condition the Luftwaffe was in reduced the capabilities of the DO-335. Many of its pilots had sufficient instruction for an advanced aircraft, and the Luftwaffe's limited resources created little chances for operational flights. Fuel shortages exacerbated these problems even more. Several DO-335s were grounded before they could see fighting. Those files that saw action showed the amazing power of the aircraft. In one known encounter, a DO-335 destroyed several bombers in a single pass by intercepting a grouping of B-17 flying fortresses. Allied pilots who came upon the file said it was a flash in the sky, vanished before they could respond. The Luftwaffe's failure to deploy the DO-335 in large numbers limited its influence, notwithstanding its potential. The Allies had developed air superiority by the time the file arrived at the front lines, therefore leaving the most advanced German aircraft unable to alter the tide of war. Many of the DO-335s that Allied ground troops seized on airfields were incomplete or grounded owing to a lack of fuel and spare parts. They were captured on airfields when Allied ground forces surged across Germany. Set for testing, these aircraft arrived in the United States and Britain, where their creative design and performances were much appreciated. 
For the Allies, the DO-335 was a technological curiosity, a window into the superior engineering Germany had pursued despite insurmountable challenges. Recognizing it as a great accomplishment in aviation, pilots and engineers who studied the file marveled at its speed, stability, and unusual engine layout. Though it was a case of too little too late, the Dornier DO-335 file entered service as one of the fastest piston engine aircraft ever built. Its brief and fractured operating history was a victim of the anarchy defining the last days of the Third Reich. Still, the file proved to be a machine ahead of its time in the brief times it spent flying. Post-war legacy and influence the Dornier DO-335 was a radical advance in aeronautic design that shaped the next aircraft models and motor systems. Although military aviation did not embrace the push-pull idea widely, its ideas have been explored in experimental designs and studies. Inspired generations of designers by the DO-335's focus on optimizing speed and lowering drag, post-war technical ideas became pillars of wisdom. Cold War experimental aircraft where engineers aim to push limits by revisiting unusual combinations show the influence of the DO-335. Though the file's design was finally a wartime anomaly, its significance resides in its bold creativity and the lessons it taught the discipline of aeronautics. Challenges in Combat Although the design of the DO-335 presented notable speed and firepower benefits, its operational use proved difficult. Pilots had to deal with the complexity of the aircraft, having two engines and keeping stability at high speeds. Moreover, the Luftwaffe's worsening logistical system meant that many DO-335s were grounded since spare parts and maintenance were sometimes lacking. The weight and dimensions of the DO-335 could be both a benefit and a drawback in combat environments. Its massive structure and dual-engine arrangement made evasive maneuvers more difficult, even if its speed made it almost uncatchable for enemy fighters. Pilots needed a lot of instruction to become experts on the special handling qualities of the aircraft. But by 1945, these kinds of courses were almost non-existent. A Glimpse of the Future for Allied troops, the acquisition of the DO-335 gave a chance to investigate one of the most sophisticated piston engine fighters ever produced. Its speed and stability astounded test pilots, and the information gathered from these tests shaped the next aircraft studies. Though the file did not immediately result in new fighter designs, its aerodynamic ideas and propulsion advances set the path for eventual improvements in aircraft performance. Although the push-pull arrangement of the DO-335 is rare in aviation history, its emphasis on efficiency, speed, and invention is reflected in the evolution of contemporary fighter aircraft. From stealth technologies to supersonic speeds, modern aircraft owe a debt to the audacious experiments of designs like the file. Restorations and Museum Displays Today, few DO-335s remain. Most have been kept in museum collections. Restoring these airplanes is no minor task. It calls for access to rare components, original plans, and close knowledge of its sophisticated systems. Every repair is a work of love that guarantees the legacy of this remarkable warrior lives for the next generations. The Dornier DO-335 file reminds us of the inventiveness and will of wartime engineers. Its presence in museums provides a window into a turning point in aviation history where creativity thrived even in the face of insurmountable obstacles. A wonder of its time, the Dornier DO-335 file was a daring experiment redefining piston engine aircraft capability. Although it arrived too late to affect the course of World War II, its performance and design permanently changed aviation history. Even in the most challenging of circumstances, the file is nevertheless evidence of human ingenuity and the unrelenting quest for technical improvement. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and press the bell icon for further amazing tales of the aircraft that created our planet if you love this thorough dive into aviation history. 
Tell us in the comments which famous aircraft we should focus on next. Your idea might motivate our next project.